a 10 meter by seven meter pond is going to be surrounded by a flower bed of uniform width. The combined area of the pond and flower bed together will be 180 meters square. What is the width of the flower bed? I'm just drawing myself the 10 by seven pond here. We'll assume it's rectangular. And now we're going to need a flower bed around it. I wish I had a better color for a flower bed, but pink will do. And it says it's of uniform width. Your teacher almost certainly wants you to show that this flower bed width here is some amount, and you don't know how much it is. I'm gonna call it X, but W would work as well. And then this length is X, and then this length is X, and this length is X. Uniform width means it's the same width all the way around X for me. Now that's significant because it means the total length of the pond plus flower bed in the long direction is the same 10 meters plus two of those widths. So for me, it's plus two X. The increase to the height is similar. I guess it's not height, it's like width of the rectangle or something. It was seven and you're adding an X on top and you're adding an X on bottom. So it ends up being seven plus two X. Most uniform width problems will have plus two X added to both dimensions. Now what you're being told is that the new area combined of all of that, the area of the whole thing, is 180 meters squared. Because area is always length times width, and we're given the area as 180, we can fill in expressions for the length of this pond plus flower bed. That's 10 plus 2x. And for the width, now this is multiplication of 7 plus 2x. Our new length times our new width is our new area. Now, this is a quadratic equation that you can solve, or you are probably expected to solve, probably without a calculator. But hey, if you get to use one, free country, right? The way that we solve quadratic equations is to multiply everything out, get rid of all these brackets, get it in standard form where one side is zero. Here's what I mean. Let's multiply out these two brackets. We call this foiling here in Canada. It's 10 times seven for 70. 10 times two X is plus 20 X. Two times seven gives me 14 X. And two X times two X is plus four X squared. Now that still equals 180, but ideally to solve a quadratic equation, we want one side to be zero. So. I'm going to move 180 to the other side. I still have my 70 plus 20x plus 14x plus 4x squared, but I'm taking away 180 on the other side. I can collect like terms. In fact, I probably could have done that earlier. Here I've got 4x squared still on the right-hand side of my equal sign. In terms of just x's, I've got 34 of them. 20 plus 14 is 34x. And I've got a 70 minus 180, which together make negative 110. So if I can solve for the values of x that satisfy this equation, then I can probably find, well, then I've found the values of x that satisfy the problem's requirements. Now I'm gonna need a bigger piece of paper here. I need to solve zero equals four X squared plus 34 X minus 110. Now, if you're feeling lazy, you could just use the quadratic formula, but that's like using a sledgehammer to drive in a thumbtack. Factoring works too. There's a greatest common factor you can pull out of these terms, they're all even, so I can divide them all by two. When I factor two out of all of these, I'm dividing each term by two. So I get two X squared here. That gives me 17 X, because 34 divided by two is 17. And this is minus 55, because 110 divided by two is negative 55. Now you could use the quadratic formula on this, which is the exact same thing, but with smaller numbers but you can also be expected to factor that. We call that decomposition here. You're looking for two numbers that multiply 
to negative 110, and they have to add to positive 17. Oh my goodness, how are we gonna find those? Well, what are some factors of 110? I know 11 and 10 work, but 11 and 10 don't combine to make 17. Uh, 110 divided by five is 22. 22 and five differ by 17. I think we're on to something here. They have to multiply to a negative number anyways. So either five or 22 have to be negative. And they have to add to a positive number. So I'm venturing to guess that we have a positive 22 and a negative five. Positive 22 times negative five is negative 110. Positive 22 plus negative five is positive 17. These are my numbers. Now I'm gonna decompose the middle term. This is how you factor when the leading coefficient isn't one and you have a shortcut, that is. That's 2x squared here. This plus 17 instead gets written as plus 22x minus 5x. See how those together are plus 17x? We're just rewriting them that way so that we can factor by grouping. Does that ring a bell for you? It means pull a common factor of the first two terms here and pull a common factor of the first two terms here. I'm gonna keep going. I've still got a two out front and I'm using square brackets because I know I'm gonna need round brackets here. That's just me though. You can use big round brackets here if you want. What's common between both these two terms is a two and an x. You can divide both of them by two and there's an x in both. Two x squared without two x is x. 22x without 2x is plus 11. I'm dividing. And now what's common between negative 5x and negative 55? I'm thinking it's negative 5. Negative 5x without negative 5 is just x. Negative 55 divided by negative 5 is plus 11. And you'll know you've done it right if your brackets match, which mine do. So I end up with 2. I'm going to pull x plus 11 out of both of these two terms and put my leftovers into another bracket that's 2x minus 5. So I've now factored this, and because of the property of 0, they call it, if something times something times 2 is 0, then either this is 0 or this is 0, which means either x is negative 11, or x is positive 5 over 2. Which of those is it? Can I add a flower bed of negative 11 meters? No, doesn't make any sense. Can I add a flower bed of 2.5 meters? Yes, that does make sense. Therefore, the flower bed that you are adding has a width of 2.5 meters. Now your teacher may ask you what the total new length and width of the whole thing are. Maybe you're even being asked to check your solution. Just remember that the new length was meant to be 10 plus 2x. That's 10 plus 2, 2.5s, which is 15 meters for us. And the new width was going to be 7 plus 2x. When you plug in 2.5 here, you get a width of 12 meters. Let's just check to make sure that 15 by 12, our new proposed dimensions, give us 180 meters squared. Oh yes, it definitely does. Congratulations, you have successfully used a quadratic equation to solve a word problem. Get ready for one of those on a test because I'm betting you'll see one. Best of luck.